Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. My name is Ron Grossman. We're continuing our studies in the book of Zechariah. This is for meeting date March 16th, 2022. We're going to be looking at Zechariah chapter 9 verses 1 to 8. We're here on Facebook Live right now and we will be posting to our YouTube channel um, at a later time. Before we start, let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, we ask now that your guidance of your Holy Spirit would be in everything said and done here, giving you all the glory and honor, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So follow with me, please, as we read the first eight verses of Zechariah chapter 9. The burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof, when the eyes of man, as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be towards the Lord. And Hamath shall also, also shall border thereby, Tyrus and Zidon, though it be very wise. And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold, and heaped up silver as the dust, and fine gold as the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out, and he will smite her power in the sea, and he shall, she shall be devoured with fire. Ashkelon shall see it, and fear. Gaza also shall see it, and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation shall be ashamed, and the king shall also perish from Gaza, and Ascalon shall not be inhabited. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. And I will take away his blood out of his mouth, and his abominations from between his teeth, and he shall remain, even he shall be for our God. And he shall be as a governor in Judah, and Ekron as a Jebusite. And I will encamp about mine house because of the army, because of him that passes by, and because of him that returns. And no oppressor shall pass through them any more, for now have I seen with mine eyes. We're into the final portion of the book of Zechariah here, and we are going to divide this final portion, which extends from chapter 9 through 14. And we are going to divide it into two parts. Chapters 9, 10, and 11 are the messianic uh, portions regarding uh, times leading up to Jesus' first appearance, and chapters 12, 13, and 14 speak about end days events, and Messiah's second advent, and redemption of Israel. So it all has to do with Israel, it all has to do with Messiah coming to Israel at either her, his first appearance, or his, and, uh, or his second appearance, and that's in the latter part of those chapters. They're called burdens by Zechariah, and the word burden here means judgment. So these are various judgments, and there are a number of them that come through this last half of the book. This was looking forward to a time where God is going to use um, other Gentile kings to accomplish his program. Now, you have to understand the prophecies of Daniel particularly from chapter 10 to the end of his prophetic book, those prophecies speak to coming, rising nations that will come in the last days. Now, the great images that Daniel um, spoke about in chapter 7 and 8 of his prophetic book, and also chapter 3, play into that as well. These were uh, prophetic visions Daniel was given, and they all picture the great uh, Gentile kingdoms that would rule the world. And the last of those Gentile kingdoms, the, the legs of that giant uh, vision of uh, the giant uh, um, Nebuchadnezzar, you might say, a giant big uh, picture of a, of a warrior king, which Nebuchadnezzar wanted to have um, described to him by his um, wise men. And only Daniel was able to be given that. And he described all of that in chapter 3. And you look at the head of gold and the, the chest of silver and then the belly of bronze and then the legs of iron and then the feet of, of composed of iron and clay. And when the stone not hewn by human hands, this is Daniel's prophecy, is thrown at the feet of this, the brittle feet, uh, iron and clay don't mix and, and don't adhere to one another. The whole kingdom vision comes toppling down. It falls down. This is God who will judge the world at the end. And that speaks to the last days of events in the book of Revelation. Now here we're seeing where Zechariah is making it clear to Israel that God has got a plan for Israel and God is going to take care of his people. Look what it says here in particular verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be 
the rest thereof, and when the eyes of man as of all the tribes of Israel shall be toward the Lord. So God's people will be looking to God at this time. And he goes on here and he talks about the various events that happened to places like Tyrus, which is really Tyre, Sidon, and Cyrus in particular, and then the, the, the people that occupy Ashkelon and Gaza, these were the Philistines, and these were the oppressors of Israel. Now, what's happening here is that God is using the various, uh, another great Gentile nation to judge the nations that attacked and that was used by God to judge Israel. So the, the judgment of God continues, but this time now it is turned on the nations that actually judged Israel, were used of God to judge Israel. Some of the judgment that they meted out on God's people was horrific. And in the end, what we saw of all of that is that God was able to overrule in all those things. He goes on in verse 2 and Three and following and speaks about and in particular speaks about Tyrus who did build herself a stronghold. Now if you were to look at where Tyre is off of the coast of Lebanon and north of Israel you'll see that it looks like there's a small um, isthmus of a sort that that goes out to Tyre. Well if you look at it on historical maps you will see that Tyre was once an island off the coast and Alexander the Great came. He conquered the known world between 333 and 323 BC when he finally died. And he came and he laid siege to Tyre, a great warrior nation, very wealthy, off on an island, a fortress saying, nobody, we're impenetrable, nobody can, can get to us. And Alexander took his time and over seven months of siege against Tyre, he had a causeway built that he allowed his armies to go into and finally battle against Tyre and destroy Tyre. You see, these were the nations groups that had come against Israel and the descendants of many who had come against Israel. Yes, God did use them, but their harshness that was used of them, yes, God allowed it went over the top as far as God was concerned. This, this would take you back to a very important verse right at the beginning of this study in the book of Zechariah. Go back to Zechariah chapter 2, specifically the last half of verse 8. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8, where it says this, He that touches you, Israel, he that touches you, Israel, touches the apple of his God's eye. Now what that means in the original language, let me take my glasses off for a moment. It would be as if God opened up his eye, if he had one, and he allowed himself to poke his, himself right in the eye right there. Would you do that to your own eye? Well, you, he who touches Israel, it's like taking their finger and poking God in the eye. It irritates the eye, doesn't it? God is irritated. And God was at the end of the line of how much irritation he would take. And he is now judging those nations. That's what verses 1 through 8 speak about. Tyre, Ashkelon, Gaza. Look at verse 6. It says there in verse 6, A bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Now, in our modern language, that means something else. But what it means is, literally from the original Hebrew, it means a mixed race shall uh, be uh, in this place of Ashdod. It isn't the original people who dwell there, but God would allow people to dwell there. And then he goes on in verse 7, I will take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations from between his teeth. But he that remains, even he shall be for our God. And he shall be as a governor in Judah and Ekron, Ekron as a Jebusite. These are the descendants of the Philistines who were involved in all kinds of abominable practices. Blood, uh, the eating of blood and, and uh, of um, dead animals uh, offered in the most horrible way. Uh, the offering of children to Molech and other related things. The same thing that Israel was drawn into as well. And God says, I'm going to remove all of that. 
And he's going to remove all of that as much as he's going to allow for one of them to be a governor in Judah, as verse 7 says. And then in verse 8, it speaks about something else. And this is important for us to understand. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll encamp about mine house because of the army, because of him that passes by, and because of him that returns. And no oppressor shall pass through them any more, for now have I seen with mine eyes. This is speaking of a greater uh, warrior king who would come in the latter days, and that's the, the brass belly of that great statue of Nebuchadnezzar's vision. And that's Alexander the Great, whom I've already mentioned. And Alexander the Great took his father Philip's kingdom after Philip's death in 333 B.C. He was one of the most prolific warriors of his time, and from the time he took the kingdom of uh, the, the Greek Empire, he went and conquered just about the whole known world as far as India. Some think he may have gotten as far as China before he died. He was sitting around the table one night with his uh, four generals, and he was wondering, what other kingdoms? There are no kingdoms left for me to, uh, to destroy and to, to take. What shall I do? And his four generals said, let's have a drink. And they drank, and they drank. The story is told that Alexander was drank, drank himself into an alcoholic stupor and died of alcohol poisoning. He had no heir to his throne. He was the heir to Philip, his father, but he was so busy conquering the world that he never married, nor did he have a, a true heir to his throne. His four generals fought over his kingdom. And that kingdom was divided into four. And two of those kingdoms would be the more prominent of them. The Assyrian Empire to the northeast of Israel and the Ptolemaic Empire, which basically occupied um, what we call Egypt and the African Horn. And they would be involved in battles between one another. And that through some of those battles is how we get the uh, Feast of the Dedication, Hanukkah. And that's a whole story for another time. But God is telling us here through Zechariah's burden of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 8 that even though someone is going to come, I will encamp around my uh, city because of that army and I will protect. God is still in the business of protecting his kingdom people, Israel. And he is going to continue to kick, uh, protect them even when there seems to be no hope left. We're Israel's hope ministries, and we teach through the scriptures that there is hope and that God has a future both for Israel, the Jewish people, and all other nation peoples. And if you are a Jewish person looking in on this today and you're saying, well, that Jesus, you've mentioned him a few times, he's not for me. Take it from this Jewish guy. He's as much for you as he was when he came the first time, and he's coming back again. God is not finished with his people, Israel. He has a glorious future for them. And we who are those who are followers of him, Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, want to express how that can be. If you're interested in knowing about that, you can send me an email, ron at ihopecanada.org. Uh, we exist to teach the church, God's called out people, true Bible-believing Christians, that God has that future for Israel and wants to use true Bible-believing followers of him to share the gospel to the Jewish person first and also to the Gentile. Romans 1, verse 16. If we can be of help to you, again, send me an email, ron at ihopecanada.org. We're a faith ministry. We trust God to meet our needs through his people on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. And if you feel led of the Lord to support this ministry, please go to our webpage, www.ihopecanada.org. You can find there by hitting the Support Us icon at the bottom of the main page. You'll see there, um, there are three ways you can uh, send a gift to the Ministry of Israel's Hope. You can send a check in the mail. Our P.O. Box address in Ottawa can be found there. If you also would like to use PayPal, it's a very secure way of uh, sending a gift. 
um, through online or you can send a gift as an e-transfer if you have a Canadian bank account and would like to transfer money from your Canadian bank account to the I hope Canada uh, bank account you can do that as well it's a safe way to do it it is very secure and you can simply find that by going again to our webpage triple w dot i hope canada dot org thank you for looking in we'll be continuing our studies in the book of zechariah next time we do appreciate every one of you who leave a message and who have told us uh, that they've enjoyed the studies we do appreciate hearing that and praise god for you let's close our time in prayer father god thank you for each person who has been here today looking live or looking in later and we ask now for your blessing upon all these things in jesus name amen so until next time we say shalom <laughs>